In this short video, we will show you how to examine a patient's visual field confrontation. There are many different methods to do a visual field examination, but we feel the technique which is about to be described is well suited to identify visual field defects commonly seen in ophthalmic patients. As with any form of patient contact, it is essential that you have introduced yourself to the patient and that you have washed your hands beforehand. You should explain to the patient that you're going to carry out a simple examination to assess their peripheral vision and make sure they're happy to go ahead with this. Glasses should be removed prior to carrying out the examination as the rim of the glasses may create artificial visual field defects. Efforts should be made to carry out the assessment in a well-lit environment with neutral backgrounds which will not interfere with the targets being shown to the patient. Finally, it is essential that both parties are positioned correctly to carry out the examination appropriately. When carrying out a visual field examination, you are essentially comparing the patient's visual field to your own, and therefore correct positioning is essential. You can see here that the examiner's eye level is in fact way below that of the patient he is examining, and therefore it is very difficult to directly compare visual fields. Similarly here, the examiner is sat too far away from the patient and therefore it's difficult for him to present targets at the midpoint between himself and the patient. This is a much better setup with knees almost touching and eyes level. Let's now run through the various stages involved with assessing visual fields. The first of which is an assessment of any crude or gross visual field defects. Firstly, a straightforward question is asked such as, is any bit of my face missing? or two hands can be presented to try and detect any gross or obvious hemianopia. The patient is then asked to cover one eye and the examiner covers his eye directly opposite. The patient is instructed to look directly towards the examiner's open eye and fingers are presented in each quadrant and the patient is asked to report how many fingers are being demonstrated. When doing this, try to imagine a cross going through the centre of the patient's pupil thereby dividing the patient's visual field into four quadrants. You can then present fingers into each of the four quadrants and ask the patient to tell you how many he or she is seeing. It is essential that fingers are presented directly into each quadrant and not overlapping the meridia and thereby overlapping two quadrants. A quadrantinopia in either the quadrant above or below would give artificially false readings as a patient would still see fingers. Good. If we swap eyes. Look towards my open eye again. Tell me how many fingers. Two, two, one, two. Good. You change your eye. The next stage is designed to confirm any findings picked up in the last section or to try and establish whether or not any further visual field defects remain undetected. Ideally, this should be done with a white pin or white target and finer targets can be used to try and identify or elicit more subtle visual field defects. Again, this is done with the patient covering one eye and the examiner covering the opposite eye. The white target is then brought in from peripheral to central and a diagonal line aiming towards the patient's pupil. The patient is simply asked to report when they are able to see the white target or the white pin. If no white target is available for use, then the same process can be carried out using a wiggling finger brought in from peripheral to central. Great. It is essential that whichever target is used is displayed midway between the patient and the examiner. Thereby, the examiner knows that he is comparing his own visual field to that of the patient. The final stage of the examination involves assessing the blind spot. and This is most commonly done using a red pin, as the central portion of the visual field is most sensitive to red light as opposed to white light. Again, this is done by the patient covering one eye and looking towards the examiner's opposite open eye. The red pin is first held centrally and is moved temporally as the blind spot is located 15 degrees temporal to fixation. The patient is asked to report when the red pin actually disappears and is then asked to report when it reappears. Again, the blind spot is mapped out in comparison with the examiner's own blind spot. An enlarged blind spot may be found in conditions such as optic nerve inflammation, i.e. optic neuritis, or optic nerve head swelling, as found in papilledema.
Let's finish by watching the whole procedure from beginning to end. Okay, so again, looking towards my face. Any bit of my face missing? Nope. No? There. Keep looking towards me. How many hands am I showing you? Two. Okay. Now if you could cover your right eye for me with the palm of your hand. Keep looking towards my open eye and tell me how many fingers I'm Two. showing you. Two. Two. Good. One. Two. Good. And if we swap eyes, look towards my open eye again. Tell me how many fingers. Two. Two. One. Two. Good. You change your eye. Again, looking towards my open eye, tell me when the white pin comes into your field of view. It's there. Good. There. I'm probably just going to keep bringing it in just for demonstration. Good. And again. It's there. It's there. Good. Okay, and we'll swap eyes. Again, look towards my open eye, tell me when the white pin comes into your field of view. There. Sorry. That's okay, that's good. It's there. Good. There. Good. There. Excellent. And finally, just to check your blind spot again, so if you cover one eye. Okay. And looking straight ahead towards me, tell me when the red dot disappears. It goes. Okay. It's back. Back again. Way there. Yeah. There. So we. Okay. So that's the yeah. way to look there. Good. Excellent. Thank you.